I'm Pastor Randall Neal of Zion Lutheran Church, Hopkins, Minnesota. I'm glad to have this chance to visit with you today, March or May 12th, 2020. I look forward to spending a little time with you each week, and I hope I haven't been scaring you off in recent week with my appearance. My hair is becoming pretty shaggy, at least by my standards. It's not my eyes yet, but I'm afraid it's getting close. Now, I know there are online YouTube tutorial lessons on how to cut your own hair, but I haven't quite got up the nerve to try it yet, so please bear with me. A haircut, I can guarantee, is near the top of my to-do list as soon as they open up the haircutting shops again when this pandemic experience is over. Now, during this eight, nine, or ten weeks, I've lost track of our COVID, COVID, uh, coronavirus COVID-19 shutdown. Uh, we're all experiencing life situations and perhaps life-affecting feelings that we've never dreamed of before this spring of 2020. I'd ask how you're holding up, but I'm guessing you've been asked that enough and really don't want to talk about it. You want to get back to normal, don't you? Well, me too. Well, today I have two thoughts I'd like to share with you today, May 12th, 2020. I'm calling the first walking on plowed ground, and it's from John 10, verse 4. And I share this because my wife Elizabeth grew up on a farm in eastern South Dakota, uh, just down the road from her grandparents, uncles, and aunts, and cousins. Uh, it was almost like a page out of that television program, The Waltons. Those of that, if you've been around a while, will remember that. The extended family was close, and they spent a lot of time together. Elizabeth, my wife, lived 12 miles from the closest town, which was Big Stone City, South Dakota, just a blip in the road. Many of the roads they traveled were mere gravel roads with lots of dust. That was the only way you could get to her, to where she grew up on the farm. And Elizabeth, she attended the local rural one-room school for her first eight years of schooling. She was the top of her class, as she says with a smile. Of course, she was the only student in her class. Well, I've always enjoyed going out to the farm over the years, been going out there since 1968. And... Over the years, hearing and even experiencing some of what life on the farm was like. One story that particularly I've heard many times now from each of the five siblings, my wife and her four uh, brothers and sisters, how they would all go out into the field with dad to pick rock. I mean, he'd drive ahead on a tractor with the plow attached and, and turn over the soil, and the kids would then follow, picking up the rocks that were turned over by the plow. I mean, it was hard work, no question about it. But one of the Elizabeth's simple comments about that experience that has stuck with me over the years was this. She said, you know, before Dad got to it, the ground was all hard. But after he plowed, I loved the feel and smell of the newly tilled soil. It almost <laughs> made it work worthwhile picking the rocks. All over the years, I've thought about that and thinking living as a Christian life is a lot like my wife Elizabeth following her dad on a newly plowed ground. Let me explain what I mean. John 10, verse 4. It reads, when he, talking about Jesus, had brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. It's shepherd talk, but Jesus is that shepherd. Jesus kind of says here, okay, Randall, you sheep, me shepherd. Wherever I ask you to go, I'm going there ahead of you. My friends, he goes ahead of his sheep, kind of like Elizabeth's dad, Melvin. He went ahead of my wife and her siblings and got the soil ready for her to work. My friends, God is getting your life ready for you to walk on. And here's my main point today. You will never be led anywhere by your Savior where he has not first gone ahead and prepared the way for you. That means you and I can dare to go someplace, to perhaps risk some things that we might otherwise never consider. You and I can take risks for Jesus because we know he's plowing that ground ahead of us. Now, we don't know what the future holds for us, do we? Of course not. 
but we know who's plowing the way for us. And that's good news. Maybe right now you are personally heading into a whole new season of your life, or you're moving into a new area, or maybe a new job, or a new relationship, a challenge. It's possible the Lord is leading you to leave your comfort zone to do something for Him. He often asks us to do that. Or there could be ahead of you a conversation, maybe, or a confrontation, a responsibility that, honestly, you're not looking forward to. Listen again to Jesus. He says, I'm going there ahead of you. I'm going there ahead of you. You see, my friends, that makes all the difference. Jesus is going ahead of you there, wherever the there is. He's preparing the resources you're going to need. He's preparing the hearts of those you're going to be talking to. He's going to be preparing the people you'll need, the supports you'll need. And he'll be taking care of any wolves that just might be there to threaten his sheep. The ground ahead right now, well, it might look pretty hard to you. But by the time you and I walk on it, it will all be opened up. Like that little girl in South Dakota following her dad in the field, there's someone out in front of you and me turning up the ground for us to travel. And that's a good thing. Well, the second thought I wanted to share with you today, I'm calling God's cake. I know during this COVID-19 shutdown, there's been a lot of food type things that are showing up on YouTube and in the news and so on. A lot of baking that's being done, a lot of exploring. And got to thinking about a little piece that I came across, a conversation between a mother and her teenage daughter about some cooking experience, particularly baking. And I thought it was kind of cute, but also very poignant because it's presented from the daughter's perspective. And it's presented as the gal, the little gal, complaining to mom about how life is unfair. I know hard for a teenager to consider that, right? And, yeah. Well, why doesn't God do something about all of this? So the daughter's complaining to her mom about how everything is going wrong. She's failing al algebra, even though it's online, and she has a chance to study it. Her boyfriend is breaking up with her, and her best friend is moving away. Oh, life is terrible. Meanwhile, mother is baking a cake in this conversation, and she asks her daughter if she'd like a snack. And the daughter said, well, absolutely, Mom. I love your cake. And so mom says, here, have some cooking oil. Yuck, says the daughter. Oh, how about a couple of raw eggs? Gross, mom. Would you like some flour then or maybe some baking soda? Mom. You know, it's always a two-syllable word. word. Mom. Those are all yucky. To which mother replies, yes. All those things seem bad all by themselves. But when they're put together in the right way, they make a wonderful, delicious cake. God works that same way in our lives, my friend. Many times we wonder why he would let us go through such bad and difficult times. But God knows what he puts in these things and that all these things in his order make a difference and they always work for our ultimate good we just have to trust him and eventually they'll all make something wonderful don't give up don't give up hey thanks for spending time with me today i'm looking forward to our next get together until then may god continue to be with you and bless you in all your ways